again, this is Jim at the House of Pooh Corner. And this is part two of our interview with Wayne Hicks. And the first part was the history of the Liberty Dollar and its current use. And we're going to discuss kind of a hypothetical in the second half, a, both a hypothetical and an actual event. And that is the ability to exchange Liberty Dollars for other currencies, <coughs> be it the dollar or if you live in France, the euro or in England, um, wh wherever you are, to be able to exchange that currency. And I should say that this Thursday, uh, well, that doesn't mean much to our listeners online, does it? Um, in a couple of days, I will be interviewing Matt Krupp, Matthew Krupp, who is an expert on credit unions, and I'm going to be discussing with him a theoretical credit union, a credit union that hasn't been founded yet, but we're working on it, that has a purpose, one of its many purposes. It would have the same purpose as other credit unions, plus an exchange mechanism for currencies like the Liberty Dollar and common good and all that sort of thing. So, and even maybe a cryptocurrency like the HOLO, uh, depending on the stability, as Wayne will explain to you in a minute, depending on the stability of that currency. Remember that Bitcoin fluctuates in value and we're talking about a currency today, the Liberty Dollar, that is based at a $25 rate uh, based on silver. So. Uh, Wayne, can you tell us a little bit about any experience you've already had and what you're look, looking forward to as a way to exchange Liberty Dollars for other currencies? Well, exchanging Liberty Dollars is very simple. I mean, since right now it's pegged at the $25 per ounce of silver, we could exchange with any currency in the world uh, based on an, an equivalent amount of their currency for that ounce of silver. For instance, um, let, let's take the, the British pound for the moment, and I think their exchange rate is something like uh, one and a quarter percent or, or one, 1. 1.2 to the dollar, mm -hmm. uh, um, or 125% is what I meant to say. So let's say it's 125%. Well. In that case, we would uh, we would need to collect thirty-one dollars and twenty-five cents for that twenty-five dollar certificate. Mm -hmm. In or thirty-one, yeah. Excuse me, I've got it backwards. It would be uh, roughly twenty. I believe it'd be roughly twenty pounds, or slightly over twenty pounds, for that twenty-five dollar certificate. Mm -hmm. Would be the correct way to say it. Yeah. But it's still the same yeah. amount of value. It's still that ounce of silver based on $25 per ounce. Mm -hmm. The same thing applies to any other global currency in, in existence today. Right. Now, when we get to the alternative currencies, such as you mentioned the common good, common good right now works one-to-one -one with the U.S. dollar. That's the same way we're working, one-to-one -one mm -hmm. with the U.S. dollar. So we can exchange common good dollar for dollar for liberty dollars and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And our public trust is already being set up to do that. The cryptocurrencies are another matter. They they keep referring to the hollow cryptocurrencies as a stable coin, something that's going to have a stable value, and yet all of the stable coins that I've looked at so far have failed to remain totally stable. Mm -hmm. As long as there's any room for fluctuation in the value of a crypto coin, then I can't exchange it dollar for dollar. Mm -hmm. It would depend on what, what the value was locked at at the time of the exchange. For instance, if it's uh, if, if a stable coin that started out at $1 is now going for $2.50, well, that's double what it should cost as far as, as, far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So I'm just not able to make a one-to-one -one exchange with that, with that type of currency. Mm -hmm. All right. There now, would be an exchange rate applied mm -hmm. so that we didn't end up losing money and hurting the value of the Liberty Dollar. Okay. 
Well, as long as I'm claiming to be a monetary expert, I do have to ask uh, something you've already answered, by the way, but we'll go into it in part two again, which is the way that Liberty Dollars are created. And one way that fascinates me, it seems, is that they are created with the presentation of goods. Is, is that correct? You present a good that you have made or that has some obvious value to the warehouse, and that person gives you a credit in, ter in Liberty Dollars. That's correct. Just like uh, the, it, it used to be that the warehouseman, when you brought your grain into the warehouse, he would give you a receipt for that grain, and that receipt was a negotiable instrument. You could take mm -hmm. and trade that for something else. Mm -hmm. It's the same principle today. Yeah, that's wonderful. And that's outside what is so thrilling about that is it's the kind of thing I've been advocating ever since I got into monetary reform, which is that what a currency ought to be, and that's the opposite of a Federal Reserve note, it's the opposite of the system we're in now, what a currency ought to be is something that is created when it is needed to buy something. And that goes you know, over the head of just about everybody. They can't conceive of a, conser of a currency that doesn't come from a bank, that, that doesn't come because you borrowed it. And this currency, the Liberty Dollar, can actually be created because you have sat at home and made your widget, which is a recognizable product and of use to society. You can turn that into a warehouse and get credit or actual physical dollars for that product that you have bought. Um, again, we've already answered this, but I just want to ask, you know, I'll let you tweak my answer. That's correct. That's exactly correct. When, uh, when someone brings a commodity into the warehouse, whether it's silver, gold, uh, corn, um, anything at all, furniture they've made, honey, uh, vegetables, when it's brought into the warehouse, it becomes redeemable for those Liberty Dollars that are issued for it. Mm -hmm. And that means that mm -hmm. if, if you bring in your widget and I give you 100 Liberty Dollars for that widget, you go out in the community and you spend that $100, whoever you spent them with can come back to that warehouse and pick up those widgets if they want to mm -hmm. or whatever else mm -hmm. in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And then they can take them out and resell them at a profit. Mm -hmm. That's how uh, that's how our, our system is designed to work, to be a circulating economy. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, and, it doesn't. Uh, and you don't have to spend your dollars to do that. You can start with nothing, build something, turn it in, and get your credit in Liberty Dollars, and you haven't had to borrow money from a bank in order to enter into this commerce, I would call it. That's... That's correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Now, Benjamin Franklin did something like, you can tell me the difference, as after I explain what Benjamin Franklin did, hopefully correctly, you can explain how that is similar or maybe different from the Liberty Dollar. Benjamin Franklin created colonial script. He wasn't the first to issue colonial script, but that's beside the point, uh, for Pennsylvania, which was extremely successful because it was based on a commodity called land, and it could be lent at a, a low interest, but <clears throat> it was created infinitely when a good and service was available. And so when you had your harvest, when you made a chair, you may have borrowed colonial scrip in order to do that, but the, that money was created because of the goods and the services. It was outside the banking system. It was public money. It wasn't based on bank debt. You might have to repay, you would have to repay the money that you borrowed, but the interest was so low and it was so popular that the that currency spread like wildfire and was so successful that the Brits had to shut it down. They passed the first currency act in 1751, which was mild. Then they passed the second 
Currency Act in 1764, which Benjamin Franklin and other scholars at the time and later, historically, said was what caused the War of Independence. It caused the Revolutionary War, not Stamp Act, not representation, not taxation without representation. It was primarily the Currency Acts because they didn't just curtail the creation of money. They pretty much tied it in a knot so that the money supply dried up instantly because the money supply was based on goods and services. So I'll shut up and let Wayne tell you how that is either similar or different from the Liberty Dollar. Well, it's very similar in that just like Mr. Franklin's script, there is a value that's brought in to back the currency that's issued. Mm -hmm. The biggest difference that I would uh, that I would think might be there is that um, we we don't necessarily have to have a tangible item. To give you an example, I mentioned that we like to help fund small businesses. Let's say you have an automotive repair business. You can bring me coupons, for instance, for uh, an oil change, for a tune-up, whatever services you offer, and bail those into the warehouse. Now, other people with Liberty Dollars can come and get those coupons and take them to your place of business to get that service and probably steal a little money while they're doing it since it's a, a coupon-based setup. This is, this is something that we can offer. The, the only thing tangible is the piece of paper the coupon is printed on, but the service is what's valuable. Mm -hmm. So we're basically backing a mm -hmm. currency uh, or some of the currency with a service to be offered at a later date. Okay. So that's the only real difference that I can see. Mm -hmm. And we have in Vermont a system, believe it or not, all have, it's been in place for years, very much like that, which is a mutual credit system. It operates out of Businesses for Social Responsibility in Burlington, Vermont. Amy Kirshner runs it. And it is similar to Liberty Dollars in that you don't have to spend Federal Reserve notes. You don't have to spend money out of your bank account to get into that system. If you do something for somebody else, you get credit. They add you a credit. If somebody does something for you, you get a debit. No dollars are exchanged. Now, of course, the state of Vermont wants its cut. In anything you do, you know, if if you laugh, they would they would tax it if they could. Um, but so would the feds. So that's the only negative that I see with the mutual credit system that we have in Vermont. And I'm I admire Amy for doing such a good job with it. I'm personally a little bit out of the geographic range of Burlington. Um, so that, that does indeed seem similar to what you were talking about with your warehouse receipt. There are some similarities. Most of what we get are tangible items that, that go into the warehouse, but we can work with futures or intangible uh, future services, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Anything that has a value, whether it's something you can hold in your hand or something you hold in your heart, can be used as a basis for Liberty Dollars. All right. And you have to, the, the person who makes the decision, who is obviously connected to the warehouse in some way, has to agree with you that it has value. We have, we have some basic formulas that we use. In other words, we like to know what is the wholesale price of the item. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if it's a new item, we want to know what the wholesale price is. Mm -hmm. And that's what we go on minus the 15% bailment fee. There may be some room for negotiation there, but that's our general formula. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you do that, this is another thing I love about this. I don't see a risk on your part, really. Um, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but if somebody comes to you with an idea, he's an inventor, and he comes to you with an idea, and he says... I have designed on paper a gadget that takes the eggs out of your refrigerator, cracks them, and makes scrambled eggs and hands them to you, you know, like Gromit, 
like, you know, what is it, Walter and Gromit? Anyway, um, mm -hmm. well, it's not Walter. What's, anyway, um, so he comes to you with this idea, comes to the warehouse person, and you've got your criteria. And he says, all right, that's a good idea. I will give you what? What, what, what does the inventor get in advance for this if the warehouse owner accepts the idea? Well, let's examine it. Let's say he brings us a, a, a device and he's got a business plan laid out that explains how he's going to make money off on this device if he can get into production. Mm -hmm. All right. What we're going to look at is what is the projected revenues over the next two to three years. And we're going to take a portion of that and call that the wholesale value. And that's what we would issue currency on based on is that wholesale value. Mm -hmm. Again, minus the bailment fee. And then that we're not we're not taking all of his profits. We're going to take a small percentage of it. If we want him to give it back, we want him to redeem that and keep his business going. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. So okay. he's going to continue continue spending every dollar. That's our goal is to keep Liberty Dollars in circulation. All right. Now, if if he fails utterly, uh, we've we've got a sound problem I, again. Um, if he fails utterly, what um, kind of loss? How would the Liberty Dollar organization uh, account? What's the accounting system? That's why we charge us a bailment fee. What we do with the bailment fee, that, that's not a profit that goes in our pockets. That's to buy reserve commodities. We use those reserve commodities to cover situations like you're describing right there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure that every Liberty Dollar in circulation has backing one way or another. All right. So if you, if you back an invention for, I don't know, if you give the guy $3,000... Um, what does he give you up front as your bailment fee? He's going to sign a security interest agreement, just a simple agreement that we have a security interest in a portion of his earnings from that invention in the future. All right. And in that, along with that, there's going to be a promissory note that he's going to make payments of X number of Liberty Dollars on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. until he's redeemed that, that security. All right. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, you have the creation of money. This is the actual, another word for, for creation of money is monetization, by the way. Uh, you have the monetization of an idea. And if the idea fails, the inventor has lost a lot of time and effort. And the creators of the Liberty Dollar have lost something it is a little hard to to tell because he's he's well, been we would have lost the amount we gave him mm -hmm. so now, now we have to make up for that in the, in the security in our warehouse mm -hmm. you know we have to cover that that loss okay I get it. so it's not a fractional reserve and another thing that monetary people talk about is fractional reserve and this is not fractional reserve no. um, this is a you're, you're you're giving someone a debit in hopes to return that 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 will get returned, but it's it's face value. Yes, and it has a security of some sort to back every Liberty Dollar that goes out. Mm -hmm. There is some kind of security backing it. In some cases, it's actual silver. In some cases, it's other commodities. We've got some books in the warehouse. We've got. Uh, lots of different things, and in some cases, it can be a future value. Mm -hmm. Now, another, I'm, I'm trying to imagine, you know, monetary people out there from uh, from uh, Public Banking Institute and other places, go, gold bugs and whatever side you're on, um, with their own questions, and I'm trying to imagine what some of those questions might be. What do you see as potential legal problems, if any, uh, at this point, I'm, and looking, for, looking forward, because 
um, the feds tend to um, make stuff up as they go along. They do, yes. I, at this point, I'm not anticipating any major problems. First off, we're still small enough that they really don't care a lot about us. Secondly, we've made sure to follow the law as to the letter. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not issue any silver coins or gold coins or any other metal coins, and we're never going to as long as that law is on the books. Mm -hmm. So we, we understand all of the rules and regulations they place on any type of financial operation, and we are staying within the law on all of them. The only thing we don't have to do is we're not a bank, so we don't have to jump through the hoops that a bank has to jump through. Mm -hmm. we're, not a, uh, we're not a lending company, so we don't have to jump through those hoops. And then that works in our favor, of course. Okay. Do you imagine becoming a bank or a credit union at, at some future point? Because then you would be entering the fractional it, reserve. It's possible, but I don't anticipate it at this time simply because we're working fine as an anti-bank. That's mm -hmm. what I call our republic trust is the anti-bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, well, let's say the uh, websites again for people. Well, uh, if you want to learn more about the Liberty Dollar, you can go to libertydollar.net. If you're interested in opening an account to use Liberty Dollars, you would go to Republic Trust. That's Republic with a K, trust.com, R-E-P-U-B-L-I-C-K, trust.com. And our store is at libertydollargeneral.com. That's where we have, uh, right now there's clothing up there and, and some other things, and we've got a lot more coming that you can buy with Liberty Dollars, electronic Liberty Dollars through the Internet most easily. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if somebody in, in Uruguay said, um, we would like to create an alternative, in Switzerland, I'll give you an example. In Switzerland, they have the Weir, which sounds very similar to this. Um, and it is a complementary currency. It operates, <clears throat> it operates alongside the Swiss franc. What's made it so difficult for the Weir is that it's not public. It, it cannot be used for paying debts to the to the government, fees, taxes, that sort of thing. And so the weir has survived all these years on that basis. And I think we all have a lot to learn from how they managed to do that. Uh, and I, I see that as a parallel. What I've just said there, I see as a parallel to the Liberty Dollar. Um, can you imagine a country somewhere, an imaginary country, that wants to use the Liberty Dollar as its main currency, maybe have some other alternatives, but to use the Liberty Dollar as its main currency, how would that work? What would they have to show you in order to do that? I'll tell you how simple it is. Uh, open a branch of the Republic Trust in that country, mm -hmm. and they can start handling Liberty Dollars that, that easily. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. We've got several branch offices opening around the country right now, around the United States right now. We've got one in Texas, got one coming up in Colorado, two in Utah, one in Massachusetts, uh, one in Indiana, one in Kentucky. And I'm talking with other people almost every day now that are interested in opening branch offices in their own communities. And that branch office, it, it's an independent business. We don't own it. Once they open it, it's a franchise opportunity. They own it. They run it. We simply give them the guidance and the information and the tools necessary to run that Republic Trust office. Wow. Well, we're planning on, on that in Vermont, by the way. Uh, Emily has started the ball rolling. We don't have any people who, who can help us, and we, we don't have the time to do it our, ourselves. Uh, so we're, we're still trying to find a commissioner. Uh, we don't want to go into this until we get a few more people, and um, right, so um, you know we'll give you a heads up when uh, if we get anywhere with that. But we want to do that, and I think what we will probably do 
is um, maybe a mix of the common good and the Liberty Dollar. Uh, but the, for the trust, that's all just Liberty Dollar. Well, we, we are setting up the system so that it, you can have an accounting for your Liberty Dollars, your common good, and your replics, which will be coming up soon. Okay. All right. And uh, that's and one of the reasons I'm interviewing. Your account and exchange. For instance, if you've, got, uh, if you've got more in your common good than you do in your Liberty Dollar account, and you need Liberty Dollars, you can, within your account, do a quick exchange and transfer the balance from your common good balance to your Liberty Dollar balance. That's great. Well, that's the, that's the conversation I'm planning to have in a couple of days with Matt Kropp, is whether or not a credit union, which of course is a bank, whether a credit union could have a, an employee who is designated to do that sort of thing. And I think that would be a giant leap forward for credit unions and it wouldn't hurt the alternative liberty dollar, etc. In the meantime, right. because we still have to pay tax. Can do it. It's just he's he's going to meet a lot of resistance. You know, you're going to meet a lot of resistance when you first do it. But I, I think it's it, it'll come. Mm -hmm. All right. It'll come. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Wayne Hicks. Uh, we have a minute left in this program. This is the House of Pooh Corner with Jim Hogue, and we have made a leap forward today. One more step in the education of people in the direction of the creation of money, which is what I've devoted, I don't know, 10 programs to over the last couple of years. And uh, we're moving forward with the Liberty Dollar. And here's Emily right now. She just walked into the studio. So that's interesting, and we'll, I will explain to her what's happened, and she will be watching this, and she will I'll probably be in communication with the USA Republic folks. And again, USA Republic, and that's with a CK, right? Yes. Yeah, usarepublic.org yes. is how you find out about the umbrella organization that we are with that's interested in the use of this currency. Yes. Now, since you brought that up, I want to tell you that I'm launching a Republic, a Radio Republic radio station, internet radio. So I'm going to be after you for an interview before too long also. Well, I'd be very happy to do that. And I'm giving a talk, by the way, in California um, this Saturday via Zoom. It'll be at a big conference, but I'm on Zoom. And uh, I'll be talking about something like that. Okay. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye.